have you ever wondered how to make the pushing stage of labor easier? I mean, really, there's so much fear and rightfully so concern about pushing out a baby. I mean, you're literally pushing out a watermelon out of a bagel hole. So I think it probably would be a good idea to really learn how to do that. If you want to understand more about pushing a baby out, in this video, I'm going to talk about five different techniques that have helped me and my clients be able to push effortlessly, to be able to push easily and actually make the pushing stage of labor the easiest and most enjoyable part of the process. Whether you're a first time mama or you just want to have a smoother experience this time around, I'm going to give you the five techniques that I teach to my clients and that actually worked for me to help me have the most smooth, simple, quick and easy birth experience to the point where I actually pushed my son out in our driveway. Hey mama, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chanel. I am a doula, mama of three, wife, and really a person who wants to help you have the same experience that I did. Feeling empowered, feeling excited, feeling confident walking into your birth so that you want to do it again, so that it's an enjoyable, beautiful, and positive natural birth experience and that you and your partner have the tools to do that. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below and stay tuned for all of the videos that I'm going to share with you, either that I've shared already or that I'm going to share in the future so that you can become confident and empowered to have a fearless and positive and beautiful natural birth experience and postpartum journey. One of the parts of labor that most women are afraid of is pushing. How do I push this baby out of my body and I've never done it before. I've heard about tearing, I've heard about the pain, I've heard about the time that women can actually be pushing out a baby and I don't wanna experience those things. So how can I avoid that? It's so important to understand the stages of labor, which I have a full series on this if you wanna check that out. Make sure that you do because it's important for you to understand the stages of labor. And the reason that it is is because if you don't understand the stages of labor, you're not really going to be effective in pushing because the pushing phase happens after you go through early labor, after you go through active labor, after you go through transition. And those things take a lot of work. So the more effective you can do those stages of labor, the more effective you can be in pushing. But you have to understand the process and what actually happens in your body, through your body, and through your body in order for you to actually push effectively and quickly. One of the big myths out there is that you're really not gonna know until you go through it. And yes, there's some aspects of that that are true, but there's a lot of aspects of that that are not true because there's so much you can do right now in your pregnancy to practice pushing out your baby so that when it becomes time for your baby to be delivered, you've already practiced what your body is going to do and know how to keep yourself calm in that position. So it is important to utilize these tools now. Don't just write them down and then try to refer to them in labor. It's important if you're gonna have a smooth labor experience and push for the shortest period of time that you practice these things, that your partner understands these things right now. And in this video, we are going to actually practice the things. I'm not just gonna tell you because my whole approach to teaching is that we're gonna teach, we're gonna practice, and we're gonna execute. So that's what we're gonna do. The same way that I teach my clients is going to be the same way that I work with you in this video to help you prepare for pushing a baby out of your body. So make sure that you actually watch this entire video so that you can practice it with me and you have a reference point to go off of so that you can refer back to this at any point, even in your labor. In my second birth experience, I pushed my baby out in 10 minutes. It was my first time pushing a baby out. I didn't necessarily know what to expect because I'd never pushed a baby out before, but I'd learned and I'd practiced some of these techniques. In my third birth experience, it happened even faster. And I felt so much more connected with my body because I took the time to learn as if this was my first pregnancy. Even though I was a doula by that point, I took the time to sit in the place of a learner as if I'd never had a baby before, to learn how to trust my body, to learn how to breathe, to learn how to move, to learn the birthing process, to make sure that my husband knew how to actually observe the birthing process so that I could lean on him for support to trust my body and to trust my baby and to be patient. So I've practiced these techniques, I've executed these techniques, and I've helped so many other women do the same thing. And I want you to be able to have those same skills here too. So we're gonna go through those particular skills 
and we're going to practice them together so that we all know how to have a smooth and enjoyable pushing experience. The first technique we're going to talk about is relaxation breathing. There are so much about breathing techniques that impact how you push. They impact how you labor and they impact how you push. One of the biggest misconceptions about pushing is that you need to hold your breath and count to 10. And for some women, that ends up being the best option for them because they are not connected with their breath, their body, their pelvic floors, and that's fine. But there is so much more effectiveness in relaxation breathing and proper breathing techniques for pushing. And if you don't understand how to breathe and to relax through that, you can quickly push your baby out way too quickly. We actually need to slow that process down. And the only way to do that is if we are relaxed. So one of the things that I teach my clients is relaxation breathing. And that is when we breathe in for four seconds and we breathe out for six seconds. And when we're doing that, we're connecting to our pelvic floors so that we can keep our pelvic floors relaxed. The more we keep our pelvic floors relaxed, the easier it is for our baby to move through those pelvic floor muscles. If we are bracing ourselves or we are clenched or we are tense or we are even holding our breath and counting to 10, whether it be during a contraction or during the pushing stage, you're creating a lot of tense muscles. And if you're using tense muscles, then your baby is having to work through those tense muscles. So we wanna to try to relax ourselves, relax our bodies so that our baby has a much easier and loose pathway to move through. So in order for us to practice this, I'm going to show you first, and then we're going to practice it together. You're going to breathe in for four seconds, and notice here that my belly is expanding. So one way that you can practice expanding is by putting your hands on either side of your rib cage. And as you're breathing in, think about filling up your belly as a balloon and or expanding your rib cage. So when you're breathing in for four, you're gonna do this. Your hands should be moving apart. And then when you breathe out for six, you're going to notice that your hands are gonna come closer together, but you should not feel like you are tensing up. You should feel like you are releasing everything and you're breathing out of your mouth slowly. In for four, out for six. That means you need to take a big deep breath in and you need to release slowly. So it looks like this all put together. That is the relaxation breath. I have a full blown video on breathing techniques, the three breathing techniques that you should use throughout labor. And I will link that down below so that you can check that full breathing video out. It is a really good technique to have you or your partner count while you're breathing during your contractions. Simply breathing in two, three, four, out two, three, four, five, six, in two, three, four out two, three, four, five, six, and repeating that or having your partner or your doula repeat that throughout the duration of your contraction will help you stay on a good breath count. What I see a lot of women doing is that is way too quick. For one, you're going to exhaust yourself. For two, you're not relaxed. And for three, you're actually not creating a calm and comfortable space for your baby. You're actually sending signals of tension and anxiety and stress to your baby. So really work on slow, deep breaths in and out so that you can keep your body relaxed, which helps in the pushing stage and helps it be a lot smoother once things start to get going. Technique number two is actually being patient. Waiting until the fetal ejection reflex happens before you actually begin pushing. One of the biggest misconceptions about pushing is that right when you hit 10 centimeters, it's time to go. And that's not actually true. What's more important is that your baby is in the right station to actually be delivered and to start that pushing process. Just because a woman is 10 centimeters does not mean her baby is low enough in the pelvis to actually start pushing. What happens in hospitals a lot of times is that a woman will get a cervical exam and they'll say, okay, sweetheart, you're 10 centimeters. Let's get ready to start pushing. 
And what ends up happening is these women push for hours. They're exhausted, they're sweating, they are over it because they're pushing a baby that is up here and not down and engaged in the pelvis. Just because that woman is 10 centimeters or her cervix is 10 centimeters doesn't mean her baby's head is right there. All that means is that she's dilated to a 10. And trying to push a baby whose head is floating above the pelvis down into the pelvis and then out of the body is going to take a lot of work. Instead, we need to actually continue to labor down. Labor down until your baby gets to a point where they're at about a positive two station. If you don't know what I'm talking about right now, I have a whole series on stations and you can check that out too. But what we want to wait for is our baby to get to about a positive two station. And the way that you'll actually know that your baby's at a positive two station is because the fetal ejection reflex will tend to happen at that point. That just means that your body is going to get a signal that it's time to push, that your baby is ready to be born because their head is low enough in your pelvis and your body begins to involuntarily push at that point. And once that happens, you cannot stop it. Whether a nurse or a doctor tells you, hold on, hold on, sweetie, hold on, sweetie, don't push it, don't push it, hold it. You cannot stop it because it is happening whether you want to or not. And that's actually the easiest way and the smoothest way to push because once your baby decides, okay, I'm ready to be here now, they're going to push their way out whether you like it or not. And that's how women like myself have pushed for seven minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes because we're not really pushing. We're just breathing using our relaxation breaths. We're just breathing through those surges while the baby is making their exit. So it is important to labor down until that fetal ejection reflex happens. How will you know the fetal ejection reflex happens? Well, it'll feel like you probably got to poop. It will feel like I need to bear down or I feel like I need to have a bowel movement. That is the sensation that you will feel when it comes time to actually pushing. So one of the things that you can practice, which I technically not, cannot practice this right now on this video, but one of the things that you can practice doing is if you feel like you may have to have a bowel movement in your pregnancy, wait. Do not go to the toilet and just push that thing out. I want you to use those relaxation breaths while you're on the toilet and I want you to wait. Do not rush yourself to the bathroom until you feel like, okay, if I do not go to the bathroom right now, this thing is going to come out of me, whether I like it or not. That's the same feeling that you'll get when it comes to pushing. That's the fetal ejection reflex. Now, of course, you may have a little bit more pressure because you have a baby there. But a lot of times, instead of that being a poop or a bowel movement, that's actually just your baby's head putting pressure on your rectum. And so that is what the fetal ejection reflex happens. But in your pregnancy, going to the bathroom and using those relaxation breaths to help breathe your bowels out is the same exact technique that you're going to use to breathe your baby out. That's why we say, breathe your baby out. Don't push your baby out. You're breathing with the pushing sensation. And that is what allows you to have this baby slide out because you've waited until the fetal ejection reflex happens. And then it just happens. Technique number three is positioning. It is so important that you understand optimal positions for pushing. And the reason that that is, is because our pelvis is positioned uniquely to open and to close in certain positions for room for your baby. I have a whole video on this as well, but what's important for you to know is that you need to be in an optimal position to open up the outlet of your pelvis. If I were to think about this as my pelvis, this is the top of my pelvis, this is the bottom of my pelvis here. I want to open up this bottom part in order for my baby to be born. I don't need to open up the top part here in order for my baby to be born. I need to open up the bottom part of my pelvis because that is what I need to create space for when my baby is exiting my body, the bottom of my pelvis, which is down at the bottom, near your birth canal, that is what needs to open. And there are positions that we can put ourselves in with or without an epidural to help open up the space in the pelvis to give your baby more room to be born. Here's how we're gonna practice it. You're going to sit on those sit bones. Those are called sit bones. Those little pointy bones in your butt. And you're going to take your legs and you're gonna move your knees in and then you're gonna move your knees out. 
And what I want you to think about or feel for is what is happening with those sit bones. When my knees are together, my sit bones move apart. When my knees are apart, my sit bones move together. This is what is literally happening with your pelvis. When that happens, the sit bones move out this way. When this happens, the sit bones move in this way. Now, when you think about the sit bones at the bottom of your pelvis, this is what's happening. Your knees are moving apart and you're kind of closing the outlet of your pelvis. But when you move your knees together and your ankles are further apart, it opens up this because those sit bones are going out, which creates more space at the bottom of the pelvis. Now, why does this matter? Well, because when we think about pushing and we see things in the media, a lot of times we see women pushing like this. Open up your knees, sweetheart, so you can create more space. We have just seen and experienced and witnessed that this creates this. So if I'm creating this from this, I shouldn't be pushing like this. I should be pushing like this where my knees are in and my ankles are out. So positioning is extremely important. You can just remember knees in, ankles out within positions when you're pushing, you will automatically create a lot more space for your baby to be delivered. Some of the most common positions to push in that allow for easy access to knees in, ankles out are on your side. If you decide to push on your side, whether you have an epidural, this is a great pushing position for an epidural, or you're just tired and you don't have the ability to be up on your hands and knees or standing up, this is a great alternative. You can simply be on your side, laying on the bed, and then somebody can be holding this leg up with your ankle up and your knee in, and you can push your baby out this way, and that allows you to have knees in, ankles out. Another easy position to push in with knees and ankles out is hands and knees. You also have the opportunity to do this with an epidural if you have enough mobility in your legs. You will have to have support, but if you can't really move your legs, this is not gonna be an option for you if you have an epidural. For some of my clients who have had epidurals, this is an optimal position because we were able to move around. Um, but if you can't, that's fine. This is an, a great posi pushing position, probably the most optimal pushing position if you do not have an epidural. So you'll be in hands and knees, and then you'll just simply rotate your ankles outward. And that's as simple as it is. That is all you gotta do. Standing up and utilizing gravity is an easy way to push, and you can simply just kind of squeeze your knees together. And then if you do end up on your back for whatever reason, hopefully we don't because we've seen how that's not effective, but if you do end up on your back because all the other positions do not work, just lay the bed flat. I do not want your pelvis like this because that tucks your tailbone under and does not allow for you to have a lot of space. So if you're gonna be on your back, lay flat on your back, have your knees up. And if you are using stirrups, just have your knees rotated in slightly. You can have your feet in the stirrups, but have your partner or somebody holding your knees as close together as you can because that will open up the pelvis and create more space. Technique number four is partner support. I know you probably didn't expect for me to say that, but it is really important because when you are in the swing of labor, it can be easy to forget a lot of these things. So that's why it's important to have a partner and or a doula to be there with you to remind you of the things that you've practiced. If you practice this enough during your pregnancy, this will become very second nature for you. A lot of my clients, are so aware and they're so in tune in the process of birth that they're communicating throughout these pushing stages and it doesn't feel like something that is uncommon. It is very common and is very normal because they know what's going on, they know what to expect. But it's also important to have their partners knowing that same information so that they can breathe with you, so that they can help you and remind you to be in a, a good position, so that they can help you labor down, so that they can remind you to put your knees in and ankles out. Having your partner alongside of you every step of this journey will absolutely be key as you get to those final stages of labor and get to that pushing stage that you will remember all the key things that you need to remember and that you have somebody doing it with you. I do a lot of moo breathing and J breathing for pushing your baby's head out when baby is crowning. And a lot of my partners will moo with mama. That is just a very common thing that we do. 
And so if your partner understands what that actually looks like and when to switch to that mood breath and how to help you count with those relaxation breaths, it really feels like a partnership and it becomes a very intimate and beautiful experience. And honestly, it makes it to where both of you have a part in labor. Mama, yes, you are holding the baby. Yes, you are delivering the baby, but it becomes such a partnership in labor when your partner actually supports you because he or she knows what is actually going on. So partners and technique number five is the use of gravity. Now we talked about pushing positions, we talked about the fetal ejection reflex, but how do we make this thing as easy as possible? Use gravity. Gravity is our best friend, especially when it comes time to pushing because why not give ourselves a little bit of extra oomph when it comes time to pushing. So if you have the opportunity to stand up and labor and move around as much as possible, that will help your baby descend into the pelvis much more quickly. And when it comes time to pushing, if you can utilize gravity, that will make this whole process a lot smoother and quicker for you because not only are you waiting until the fetal ejection reflex happens, you're also really not having to do that much work, but kind of stand there and breathe through those surges and allowing your baby to do the rest of the work for you. One of the best positions to utilize when you're actually pushing with gravity is by simply being in a pseudo lunge position. All that means is that you are standing up and either all that means is that you're standing up and either propping your foot up on a birthing stool or propping your foot up on a chair. Something super simple. You do not need to be doing some crazy gymnastics type of lunge or position. It's just simply propping your leg up on something that's very short, like a squatty potty or a birth stool or a step stool. That will open up your pelvis a lot and help baby have lots of space to move and to descend out of your body. And you, your nurse, your midwife, your OB, your doula, well, maybe not your doula, or your partner can catch your baby and then you get to meet this beautiful bundle of joy. So if you have the opportunity to use gravity, it is really, really crucial that you utilize it if you can. It makes things so much easier for you. A lot of providers in hospital settings usually give you a lot of pushback for actually standing up because of the liability it creates for them. But I want you to know that you have the right to push in whatever position you feel comfortable with. And if that means you have to catch your own baby, then you need to learn how to catch your own baby. And many of my clients have caught their own babies, not for that particular reason, but because we have to be prepared to do that one way or the other. And it's important to have these conversations ahead of time so that you know what your rights and your options are and that you can have those discussions with your provider to have the opportunity and the ability to push in whatever position feels the most comfortable and strong for you. All right, mama, that was a lot. If you do this and it works for you, drop some encouragement in the comments below, or if you have questions, drop those in the comments below so that we can cheer you on, we can root for you, and we can also congratulate you for how you've been able to utilize these exact techniques in your labor experience. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up so that I know you like these kinds of videos and we will do more demonstration videos. We will do more long form videos that will help us actually practice these techniques together. Thank y'all so much for watching. I will see you on the next video.